Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about our off-grid power system, some technical specs for you, how much the systems cost in Thailand, and some recommendations if you are thinking about installing a similar system of your own. If you just want to st jump straight to the cost for each system, I've added label chapters so that you can jump straight to that information. Let's get right into it. So we now have three separate solar PV installations as you can see from this shot. I will show you the different installations that we have and then talk in more detail about each system, what it covers, what it does, etc. But installation one is primarily for the groundwater pump. Installation two is for the initial container house we put in or temporary home. And installation three is for the workshop area. Installation one is the simplest solar installation we have by far and primarily is only to run the groundwater pump. For those that might find it this of interest, it consists of eight polycrystalline solar panels at 330 watts each, producing a total just over 2.6 kilowatts of power. The solar array is made up of two strings of four panels in parallel, producing around 170 volts DC in ideal conditions. This can drop as low as 110 volts in poorer conditions, by the way. Um, I will also talk more about the difference between polycrystalline or monocrystalline PV panels later on, it actually is very important in my opinion. The panels feed a Handero pump controller feeding the Handero pump in the borehole and have anti-surge and breakers installed as protection and there are no batteries attached to this system. So I want to quickly talk about some of the pros and cons and costs of this setup. We did manage to keep the cost down by not installing battery storage and also through the use of polycrystalline panels instead of monocrystalline panels. The downside to this of course is that during low light conditions or overnight you have no groundwater pumped into your storage tanks. It's worth noting that poly panels are nowhere near as efficient as mono panels in low light conditions. The total cost for this system was around the 60k Thai baht mark or about 1700 US dollars. So moving on to the second uh, PV installation, this one is considerably larger than the previous one, coming in at around 4.5 kilowatts. This setup primarily feeds the temporary housing container, feeding things like general power, lighting, refrigeration, aircon for overnight, uh, the water pump for domestic water, and security cameras. The PV array itself is around 8 times 565 watts. These are premium grade monocrystalline panels which are incredibly efficient. This feeds a 6.2 kilowatt inverter charging a 10 kilowatt 48 volt lithium battery pack. We were lucky to find a quality installation contractor for this system who did a premium install for us. As a result, it wasn't exactly cheap, but you pay, basically pay for what you get. And I'm really pleased at how well this system performs. Some other nice touches on this. This system also has a Handero pump controller. Uh, I'll talk about that in another video because it's a little bit more complicated. And also it has a control board set up in the distribution, your mains distribution, which can limit the amount of current that goes through the distribution board. This in effect is another layer of protection for your inverter to make sure you don't, you don't overload it trying to draw too much current. So to sum up for installation two, we have eight solar panels, monocrystalline panels, very efficient, 4.5 kilowatts, a self-procured 6.2 kilowatt inverter, and a 10 kilowatt battery pack. The main thing I'd like to talk about with this system is that I self-procured the inverter, which was great as it reduced the cost by 50%. But the downside of this was that it didn't have any kind of guarantee from the installer. So if it goes wrong, you basically have to replace it yourself. The total cost of the system was around 130,000 Thai baht or 3,700 US dollars. This was installed by a premium 
installation constructor. I'm really pleased with the quality of the work they did and as a result this is not the cheapest system that you will see on the market but the quality of install is great, superb. The final system I'd like to talk about today is for the new workshop area which I haven't shown much detail around so far. This system is the largest to date consisting of 12 times 550 watt solar panels totaling around 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Uh, these panels feed a 10 kilowatt inverter linked to a 10 kilowatt battery pack and this system currently feeds a larger refrigeration, refrigeration system but primarily has to run various power tools including some heavy current usage such as welding for example. This system also has a programmable current limit on the mains distribution. Some other nice features, it's mounted on a very nicely made welded steel frame and also it is expandable. We can easily add another 10 kilowatt battery pack with the current photovoltaic setup which it could handle it easily and charge with no problem. Current charge times for both systems 2 and 3 to full battery capacity capacity is typically less than three to four hours. So just to sum up, system one, uh, 2.6 kilowatts came in at 60,000 Thai baht or 1700 US dollars. System two was 4.5 kilowatts and came in at 130,000 Thai baht or 3700 US dollars. System 3 was 6.6 .6 kilowatts and came in at 180,000 Thai baht or 5,000 US dollars just over. So the total was 370,000 Thai baht or just over 10,000 US dollars. Now that seems like a lot of money but with rapidly inflating energy costs globally having zero energy bills is a huge plus right now and it is a sustainable solution. A few thoughts or advice from my own personal experience. Make sure that you pay each contractor for their own work and not through a principal contractor. This will avoid any issues later if the principal contractor suddenly claims cash flow issues, which we did happen, have happened to us and could have ended very badly. Fortunately, we came out of the situation having all the equipment that we paid for, but it could have been a completely different story. Monocrystalline panels have amazing performance as well in my opinion. They turn the inverter on at 6am when it still appears to be dark outside. The performance from these panels is incredible. One final thing, you can save a lot of money if you procure or buy the equipment yourself but do be aware that if there's an issue with that equipment it will, it will probably come back to you to resolve it. Just bear that in mind. Hope you enjoyed the, the video and please do consider liking and subscribing if you found it useful. Take care.